Hello, Gary Simon of designcourse.com. Today we're gonna to step into a two-part blender series for beginners, and we're gonna design a really simple but really cool looking 3D software box as you just saw. All right, so today we're just gonna focus on solely the blender portion where we're gonna get the basic shape of the software box out and also UV unwrap it and set up the scene. And then tomorrow we'll go ahead and focus solely in Photoshop, bring that over and then make a scene out of it that looks pretty much just exactly of what you saw uh, just before me talking. All right, so if you haven't yet, check out designcourse.com and subscribe here at YouTube. All right, let's get started. All right, so if you're new to Blender, real quickly, right-clicking will allow you to select an object to move around the viewport. You use your third or middle mouse button. To zoom up, you use your scroll wheel. And to pan, you hold shift and left-click. I'm running through this really quickly for a couple of reasons. Well, one is because I've done a ton of these um, Blender tutorials, beginner tutorials already. I've done it like 50,000 times, that brief introduction. And because I don't have too much time today, unfortunately. So uh, what I'm gonna do is get a file new, you have to stay there and hit reload startup file just so we're looking at the same thing all right so basically as with any other project when you're you know, thinking about modeling something you know you have to consider what is the basic shape of what you're about to begin or what are you trying to create so it is a rectangle a software box so we can use this existing cube that is here by default uh, to get started so what I want to do is Ordinarily, just to preface this real quick, um, if you were to really be serious and you're trying to design a render of a real software box that you're attempting to get printed, what you would do is, you know, whoever you're going to use for that packaging and the printing, you would try to find the exact specifications of that software box so that obviously your render is going to be accurately reflecting what it will look like exactly in the real world. Uh, but for this, we're just going to assume this is a fictional product, product uh, software package. So I'm just going to eyeball it when I come to deform this cube. All right. So what I want to do is I'm going to hit tab and that will take us to edit mode. So there's two ways of getting there this way and then tab. So toggling between object and edit mode gets you between those two states. So object mode, of course, you can move things, scale them up and down and rotate them. Uh, edit mode allows you to edit and transform the actual shape itself. So by default, we're in user perspective mode. That gives us a realistic 3D perspective. If you hit five on your number pad, that gets us to ortho mode. And this isn't realistic in terms of a 3D perspective, but it does make I uh, messing around with the actual geometry a little bit easier. All right, so what I'm going to do is if you hit one on your number pad, you go to the front view. Uh, seven, of course, is top. Three is the right side. Hitting control in any one of those, uh, like control three will give you to uh, left. Control seven will give you bottom. Control one will give you back. All right, so we want to go on the top, okay? So what I want to do is take hit A on your keyboard and that will deselect and that will toggle between select all and select none. Hit B. This is kind of like the lasso tool in Photoshop. And also turn on this thing real quick before you do that. Otherwise, if it's off by default and you leave it off, you hit B, you'll only select the visible vertices. We want to select all of them. So that's what this option right here does. So go back to seven, hit A, B. Now it's selected both of them. All right, so hit seven, and now what we want to do is just drag it on the X axis right around there somewhere. All right, and it's also a little bit too, well, it's basically a perfect square, and you know a uh, software package doesn't look like that. So what we'll do is I will go to, we'll hit three, hit A, B, as in boy, drag that thing left, roughly right around there. So if you hit A twice, we'll move this thing up. 
Actually, if we want to move it, we can switch to tab uh, to object mode and move it up here right around there. And I want to add a plane at this point as well for it to actually be sitting on something. So I'm going to hit Shift A, Mesh and Plane. All right, so I'm going to hit S for Scale and just type in something big like 50 on the keyboard and hit Enter. All right, and now what I want to do is just uh, make some quick adjustments. This is something I basically do in every project. I come over here. We want to first select uh, Cycles Render. We're going to select GPU. Now, if you don't have the GPU compute option and you do have a graphics processor, you can go to File and we'll go over here to User Preferences. Click on System and over here under Compute Device, if you have uh, G these cards listed, or they may be to something entirely different, select, click on CUDA, and then just click out, and then you'll be able to select GPU compute. And it makes rendering a thousand times faster, almost. All right, uh, the resolution, when I go to render this, I want uh, 1280 by 720, and 50% means that it would do 50% of this value. I want 100%. I'm going to come down here to sampling. By default, right now, we're at uh, the render is at 10 samples. That's actually very low. So if you go over here, you switch from solid view to rendered view, you'll see that it gets kind of grainy. It's not too noticeable right here, though. Uh, I'm going to switch to the world view real quick. I'm going to make the color kind of like a, a, a light gray color up there. All right, and I'm going to go back here. And for render, I'm going to change the samples to, I'll try 700. The higher it is, the longer it'll take, but the better quality. And the preview is what we're looking at now. So uh, I'm just going to leave mine at like 100. So as you can see, it's running through that real quick at 100 samples, and it gets through it pretty quickly. So as you move around in here, it'll run through 100 samples each time that you change the view a little bit. All right. So now what we want to do, and we have our uh, software box, and it looks you know pretty accurate to an actual software box. What we want to do is UV unwrap it. All right, so we'll switch off to solid, and right up here, when you change, I mean you hover over it, your icon changes. When it changes like that to all the crosshair, left click and drag down, and that will split the view. It duplicates or replicates whatever is up here. And so we want to change this view over here. By default, it's a 3D view. We want to change this to the UV image editor. All right, so now what we want to do is come over here and let's see here. Yeah. Go to image and new image. And we're going to take this and multiply it by 2, which is 2048. You can enter math and it'll just do it for you automatically. And you can leave all these other options the same, and we'll hit OK. Now, by default, you see this massive black thing over here. All you have to do is just scroll wheel and uh, zoom out like that. OK, so now what we want to do is right click to select our actual box, and we want to hit Tab to go into edit mode. All right, so right now it is currently not UV unwrapped. So what we want to do is you hit the letter U on your keyboard with everything selected. You have to make sure you hit A and A and it actually lights up everything. So hit U and hit unwrap. Now when you hit unwrap, uh, most of the time the desired result doesn't look like what is ever is up here. It just, basically what it did is make everything a square. So you have other options though. You can go to U again. You can try Smart UV Project, hit OK. And now you can see it has our two long sides, has the top and bottom, and it has the front and back. You can try experimenting more, uh, Q Projection. You could try Cylinder Projection, That's that wouldn't work. You could try Sphere Projection even. You could try all these different things. Uh, so I think what will work best is doing project from view a few times. So what I'll do is get this in more in view. We'll hit five to get in ortho mode, and then we'll hit one. Actually, that's not our front. So if I hit three, or 
sorry, control and the three on the number pad will get to left ortho. And what I'm going to do is simply, we have to make sure uh, that we don't adjust this view in, in terms of uh, zooming up and out at this point. What I want to do is select into face mode. By default, we're in vertice mode that lets you select the individual vertices by right clicking them. Then you have side mode and you can select the sides. We want to go to face mode. When you select, a, when you change to face mode from either of those two, you'll see this little dot shows up in the center of each face. So right click it and that lets you select that specific face. And you can see the issue with this is, is uh, what we'll be doing um, in the next lesson, we'll be taking this whole UV layout, it's called, and we're going to export it as a PNG image, and then we're going to import it into Photoshop. And the reason this wouldn't work out is because you're going to be designing uh, what should be a perfect sort of rectangle, but this isn't perfect. So that's why this is an issue. And what would happen is if you tried designing in it, it would look all distorted and like off-centered and stuff. So you want it to be as accurate as possible based on the 3D geometry. So if we hit U, project from view, you'll see it now changes to a perfect rectangle. So if we hit G on our keyboard, that's the uh, shortcut for move, we could just move it over to the side temporarily right there. All right, so we're on the left view we want to go to the right view. So we hit control three to get to left. So all we have to do is hit three on the number pad to get to the other side. We'll right click that face, hit U and project from view. And we'll just move it over right around there because the other one is right here. All right, and then we'll hit one and this is front. So we'll select this one right here make sure it actually shows that one because it, it, it allowed me to select the back one because of the uh, that option we had selected. We'll hit U, project from view. All right, so this is front. I'll hit G and just move it over here. And then we'll hit control one to go to back view. Right click it, U, project from view. Hit G and move it over to the very right. So that's good. And then we have two more just to worry about and that is the uh, top. So if we hit seven, We'll go ahead and right click that to make sure that lights up. We have U and project from view. The top and bottom, I'll just stick up here. And then control seven gets us to the bottom and U project from view, G and just move this over here. So now if we hit A to deselect all and then A again, we'll see all of our individual parts as needed. So what we can do is Take all of these and rearrange them so that it makes logical sense based on this UV layout. So I'm going to move this up just so we can have a little bit more room to work. And if you hit A, you can deselect everything. And then B, you could select these two. And then we could scale these up quite a bit. So hit S and G. And let's get these lined up next to each other. I'm going to move this real quick so nothing's overlapping over there. And so all I have to do is take I uh, hit A and B, G, line them up right next to each other. I'm going to hit A, B, select these two, and then B again to select these as well. Hit G and move these up. Actually, I'm going to move them off screen. All right. A, B, G. I think I'm going to leave it right around there. That will, be, that will give us a decent enough, decent enough resolution at a, uh, a, a 2048 by 2048 document. Then I'm going to take these over here, and these are the sides. And so I'm going to hit A, B, G, A, B real quick. We'll move them together, get them kind of lined up. And you can zoom up a lot. G. All right, that's pretty good. And I'm going to hit A and B and select both. G to move them over. S. I'm going to try to get them the same height as the front and back as well. So if we hit S, G, 
S. G. You can use your arrow keys after hitting G to move these into place. All right, and then we have the top and bottom up here. A, B, G, S. And right around there is pretty good. And I'll go ahead and move these over to... Actually, what we could do is rotate them. So if you hit R, X, 90. So... Again, R and then X and then hit 9 on your keyboard and enter. And A, B, will hit G. And then again, A, B, and I think the size is pretty good. So we could hit just, we could put it right over here just for now. Now take them all, we'll move them up, G. And then also you can hit X or Y. So let's hit Y. And right around there is pretty good. So if we move up, believe it or not, when it comes to the uh, the size differences between these, even a pixel will kind of throw it off. So if you hit A and then B and select these two, and we hit G and Y, right there, that looks pretty good in terms of how they're lining up. All right, so now what we wanna do at this point is export the UV layout. So what you do is go to UVs, export UV layout. And I paused real quick to create an actual folder for this project. And we'll go ahead and take in, make sure all UVs is specified and 2048 to write 2048. The fill opacity basically is the opacity of the layer that contains the UVs, which is fine. So it'd be 25%. So we'll just call this uv-layout.png and hit export layout, just like that. All right, so that wraps up this video for today. And again, kind of pressed for time so I'm not going to complete the video today. Tomorrow we'll be able to go ahead and finish this up with the majority of our work being in Photoshop. All right, so check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet. And also, just because I've been so busy working on this intently, I wanted to show a preview real quick of some software boxes I designed for designcourse.com recently. All right, so this is I uh, I've shown this off in a form. I uh, some software boxes, let me make that bigger, that I, I've i been working with in uh, using the same technique really as Blender that I'm showing you guys. And you can see they look really cool and you can play around with them and yeah. So anyhow, yeah, check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet. These two products will be releasing soon. So uh, subscribe here and also enter your email at the site and you'll receive an email once I launch this uh, this basically a subscription service that gives you access to these products and then many more in the future. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.